the Catholic prophecies concerning the great monarch and his pope. Listen to these. These are just one line uh, quotes from prophets or uh, inspired men down through the centuries speaking about the great monarch and his pope. Quoting, his sword will be moved by divine power. Now, of course, the sword in the revelation from the mouth is the sword of truth brandished by the Christ in his second coming, as he did in his first coming as Jesus back as the Christ, the two-edged sword of truth from the mouth. Quoting, this is, uh, that was from Rudolf Gechner, 17th century. This next one is from Premel in the 5th century. Quoting, and a voice fell from the heavens. Here are those whom I have chosen. And in brackets, that is the great monarch and the holy pope. Literally hundreds of prophecies announce the rise of the great monarch, and here are a few. This is from Augustine in the 5th century, quoting, A Frankish king will one day rule over the Roman Empire, Frankish meaning of French descent. And of course, you will remember Yahweh exposing in his own lineage that the second wife of King William the Lion of Scotland was the Queen of France, Isabel de Avenel, and she gave birth to his direct descendant in Henry Golightly, she being more royal uh, than anybody else, married King William and that made Henry Golightly and then his offspring in Patrick, uh, the most royal man at the time of the 13 competitors when he stayed away he knew that the throne had already fallen to evil and so he remained away from it as his grandfather had adjured him to. Now the sixth period of time will begin with the powerful monarch that's from the 17th century. The good people, this is a quote from the 19th century, the good people will triumph when the return of the king is announced. Hello. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the blatantly obvious. <laughs> Here's an old Saxon prophecy. He will come from the fleur de lis, which is the flower, the lily, and an emblem of France. And of course, Marechal is of William the Conqueror from Normandy. So the Marshals were also French. And on the Marshal shield, the black and white, of course, it features the fleur de lis. Fifth century, Saint Catardus, a king of the house of lilies, which is the fleur de lis. Fifth century, Saint Caesar, he shall recover the crown of the lilies. 12th century, German abbess, the white flower again takes possession of the throne of France. That was Saint Hildegard. And the last one here from the 12th century, he shall inherit the crown of the fleur de lis crown of the lily. And then there are other uh, prophecies, many of which have already been fulfilled, and it they talk about this great monarch and his pope. Well, of course, this great monarch, and what they didn't realize, all these men and women, 
giving these prophetic utterances, and again, it's the blatantly obvious that nobody seems to have clued into, is that the great monarch is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that can only be the Lord Jesus Christ in his second incarnation. And so all of this is, is it, 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 I'll just read this part of another prophecy that an anti-pope will be in Rome and the developing apostasy becomes universal. Now, 1958, the conclave, uh, Cardinal Siri from Genoa here in Italy, he was actually voted in the conclave. He took the name St. Gregorius the 17th. However, under great duress through the enemies of the Holy Mother Church within the conclave, he did not become Pope. He was not crowned Pope. Instead, and this is where they say the anti-Pope ar arose, a man by the name of Angelo Ran Roncalli became Pope. He was the usurper. And that was 1958, and of course it was only a, a couple of years later that Vatican II, the Ecumenical Council, was held, and over the three years with the 2,500 men, that was the open door for the enemies, not only of God, Christ, Jesus, but for all mankind. So the anti-pope at that time, Ron Kelly, and it continues, of course, uh, down through Pope John Paul II, devil of a man. And then we have Pope Benedict XVI, a successor, much to his surprise, from Pope John Paul II. What you have here is God pipping in his man right at the post because second to Benedict during the conclave in 2005, of course, was Bergoglio, the anti-Pope, anti-Christ, who is in position now. So you can see how um, the election, right at the very last, nobody expected Pope Benedict to be elected. It was a big surprise. That's because the enemies within the church had been counting on Bergoglio getting in so that he would be, he would be the seven and he would be of the eighth. But now because of uh, the heavenly angels moving. Benedict gets in right at the last minute. He is the seven king pope of the Vatican from its formation on February the 11th in 1929, and then 84 years later to the date. He, is, uh, he makes his announcement that he will resign as Pope through ill health, etc., all kinds of reasons that he felt he just couldn't cope anymore. But I, I think more than anything was the sickness of his heart over the state of affairs, the absolute filth, the atrocities that were being committed, the abominations, and certainly the Vatican are the gates of hell. And he knew it and he could do nothing about it, feeling very old. However, it was all divinely orchestrated because with the withdrawal to Castel Gandolfo is where Benedict, who is God's man, his Pope, met through the email, his own words, the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, that Pope Benedict uh, announced, wrote the apostolic letter and announced. He actually announced, the announcement went out publicly on March the 12th, 3 one two. 312, which of course is the English Gematria for Brian Lanigo Lightning Marshall, and is a reference to the Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, which finishes with the new name of God, which is Brian Lanigo Lightning Marshall. So it's all synchronistic and divine. And then the Antichrist, Anti Pope, Bergoglio, the biblical Gog, was elected the next day on 313, the 13th of March. The conclave itself, absolutely illegal. The cardinals had the information from the, the 8th of March that the Christ had returned, and nobody said anything or stopped 
the election of the Antichrist. So it's all this orchestration, it's all fulfilling prophecy. The events in the last three months since the cutoff by the anti Pope Antichrist Francis shut down the communication between Pope Benedict, who is still Pope, he cannot retire. The Christ told him, You are still the Pope, you can abdicate as king, you cannot retire or resign as the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. So Benedict, who is Peter, he is the reincarnate of Peter, the original, who was the half-brother, step-brother, the same mother Mary of Jesus. And that is why Pope Benedict was the one to recognize the image within the Shroud of Turin. So Jesus speaking, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, so it applies to Benedict. If you have seen Benedict, you have seen Peter because he is the soul of Peter back, known as Benedict the Sixteenth, renamed Peter the Second or Petrus Romanus by the Christ. So Yahweh the Christ is the fulfillment of the great expected Frankish monarch. It's all to do with the second wife. The first wife, Ermagard, died, and William married Isabel de Avenel, the Queen of France, and she gave birth to Henry Go Lightly. And of course, prior to that is the William the First, the Normans, and um, it all goes back to Judah, of course, King David the offspring of David, the root of Jesse. More than the offspring of David, it has to do with the root of Jesse. David himself committed adultery with Bathsheba that gave birth to the abomination known as Solomon and whom the queen delights in um, having the royal recorders trace her roots back to. Well, that line is totally evil. Jesus came through Nathan as he does today. It's all about the root of Jesse. So as the king of Judah, um, of course there's, there's the Habsburg connection too through his grandmother who was a Harrison and Habsburg, king of all of Europe, Spain included, Germany and there's no escaping. It's the Christ. Happily, because what this great monarch that the Catholics are expecting back. So with this announcement by Benedict, uh, he has truly stepped up to the plate as the Pope who will, with the Christ, bring about paradise upon the earth for all men. Now it talks here about what will happen under the reign and those of you who have been um, our disciples for long enough know that Yahweh has talked about how it will be. That is, he nominates who will rule the nations. So it will be the demise of democracy, which is a tool of communism, which of course is Judaism. It's all a tool of the Jew world order. The Jews who call themselves Jews and are not the Khazars, the Mongols, the savage barbarians that have been ruling the temple through Israel, England, the United States, and the entire Protestant Christian world being totally uh, devoured by them preaching Judaism, Judeo-Christian. There is nothing, there is no association at all with Jesus and Judaism. He condemned it all. They will not inherit the kingdom of God they themselves do not believe in the afterlife. It's all about getting what they can now in this life. And this is why they are so savage and will do anything to steal from you. They themselves do not labor because they believe that all of the world is there for them as animals with two hands to serve them. So it's a complete reversal because it's they who are the goy, if you like, and all of those that they call Gentile, are the tribes of Israel scattered throughout Europe, England, Ireland, Scotland, and it all comes down to one man, the returned Christ, the great 
monarch and his pope is Benedict XVI, renamed Peter because Benedict is Peter, just as Brian is Jesus Christ, Yahweh, the creator. So it's all rather marvellous coming down to this point now. And uh, let me if I can find, um, oh, listen to these things that have been fulfilled because these have been prophesied through inspired men over the centuries. There's uh, all beginning very early in the piece. Ireland occupied by the English for seven centuries and then the second one, England leaving the Catholic Church in the 16th century, which of course that was all through the reign of Henry VIII, a murderer, an abomination, and he being the founder, if you like, of the Church of England, a, a, a murderer and an adulterer. Three, the discovery of the continent of America for the French Revolution and the decapitation of the French king. Now, there's the admission, I think it's gain, it's in the Harold Rosenthal interview where um, they brag, or m maybe some other documented, yeah, where they brag about the influence. It was Rothschild right then. They instituted the French Revolution and it was all about introducing uh, Masonic abomination. Uh, the French king, of course, Louis, he was Catholic. And this is what it was about overthrowing. It's always been about overthrowing the Catholic Church, the Holy Mother Church, because indeed it is. And is why it has been targeted by the devil for centuries from, the, from its inception. But as Jesus, he knew that. And there have been many deluded men and much um, error come out of the teachings. However, the Christ, the great monarch, is Catholic. He was born into the Catholic family and faith for the very reason that he will take it over as the Christ and restore it. So listen, um, here we have Catholic King Louis the Sixteenth, the King of France, and then he distributing alms to the poor. And then in the middle, you've got the French Revolution, Satanic Freemason Creed. You've got the capstone, of course, with the eye in it and um, uh, the Egalite Liber, Liberté Fraternity. Well, that's all Illuminati, Freemason, uh, devil, satanic worship. Then you have the Reign of Terror. It was the Masonic French Revolution of 1789. And then the execution of the Catholic monarch, Louis XVI, on January the 21st, 1793. And, of course, it was uh, a beheading through a guillotine. And then number five, modern inventions, the steam engine, the motor car, the aeroplane, submarines, nuclear power, television. So all of these things have come about. The rise of the lower classes, the advent of democracy. Remember, it's demonocracy. And then number nine, seven, communism. Now, communism is Judaism. It's all inspired. They are all Jews. Jewish communist leader Vladimir Lenin. And this is what Hitler recognized. He said that the two greatest perils to the future of humanity were Marxism and Judaism. What he did not understand, there's just always been one great peril, and that is Judaism, because they come up with all the other isms themselves and hide as they do because they're maggots hiding from the light within the patrescent body that they are infesting. That was a brilliant, uh, brilliant analogy by Hitler. Okay, number eight was the development of literacy and the proliferation of pornography. This is totally Talmud Jewish Judaism. This is what they do. They set out to do. You can read the protocols of Zion and the Rosenthal interview and it's all like a mission. This is how they demoralize a society. They worm their way in like the maggot, infest it and then release all of this filth into it to corrupt and pervert the soul, the morality, demoralize societies. So then number nine, low moral standards, permissiveness, permissiveness and deviations. And then under who can count the souls damned by Hollywood's vicious vice-ridden entertainment industry? Again, all Jewish, every single part of it. You all know this by now. Ten, crisis in the church, new liturgy and apostasy of many bishops. Well, that's uh, what Vatican II brought down. It was happening before then. Then the anti-pope, um, Ron Kelly, usurped the real pope in 1958, and then you have the door opening to 
all hell, the hordes of hell, being the Jews. John 8, 44, Jesus condemned them, them they are condemned to death. There is no salvation for them at all. They have wormed their way in to infest, demoralize, pervert, and uh, cause to become hell. So, uh, and now here this article is talking about an anti-pope in Rome. It began in 1958, but of course we're right there now. You've got the anti-pope Francis, who is the biblical antichrist, Gog, Leo, all revealed. So as they talk about all of these timelines and the revealing of the man of sin, it's all being done. The Christ has done it himself. So now is the uh, culmination, if you like, of all of these prophecies in the great monarch. He's returned. Benedict, of course, familiar with the Catholic prophecies. You know, as the King of Kings, the Lord, the most royal man alive, well, of course, that's who the great monarch is. And he restores the kingdoms of this earth to cover the entire earth. And others who may resist at first will come to him because it works. The rule of a righteous king. Everybody lives in peace, plenty, free from concerns, especially security. The, yeah, exactly. the, churches print the churches, the Holy Mother Church will print the money. And uh, yes, here's a photograph of Gregory the 17th the Petrine line. Now, of course, they go on about the Petrine line. Well, um, it ends with Peter. He's back. And that's in Pope Benedict, the great monarch. To restore Catholic order, I read in the previous upload where I'm uh, having a go at the anti-pope, anti-Christ uh, reading Vatican III that Christ wrote for Benedict II, his pope, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth, rather, Vatican III restores the Catholic order. It restores the faith. It restores. It restores peace to the earth, and all other nations will come into the Catholic faith. Now, Catholic, of course, simply means universal. So, if the kingdom of God comes to the earth, heaven comes to the earth. Think. I've said this before. Think of it this way. And prior to this time, now dying and going into the heavenly realm, it's universal. The acknowledgement, the worship of God, knowing who He is is universal. Universal. There's nobody there saying, you know, well, I don't like that guy and I'm not going to... No. Total order. Total peace. Total love. Total discipline. All for the sake of the children to come. So, the fulfillment of the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on the earth as it was in heaven. So it's going to be done on the earth as it was in heaven. Because the Christ is returned as the King of Kings, the great Catholic monarch of uh, the French line of kings, a Frankish king, if you like, through Isabel de Avenal and William the First, William the Conqueror, Marshal. Uh, it's all to do with Christ, who is God in the flesh. Many of these men they, they, God will send, God will send. Well, God has sent himself, he comes. Jesus was God, Yahweh, he comes back as the great monarch to restore peace and order, prosperity and plenty, rest for his creation. So, that's it for now. We've got to get to our office to upload these. <laughs> okay. Get the sun again.